It's Sunday, August 28th, 2011. Let's click the pots. Thought we'd uh, try something a little bit different. Real short version of social contract. We'll go from there and I'll follow through with some other notes that I've made over the years. The social contract is basically more than just the laws that we have or anybody has in a given nation. And it's more than just how we connect with certain political groups even though they don't quite fit our own philosophy. The social contract is basically how we function with one another on a social level. What is to be expected? What's the norms? What's the givens? You know. and in today's society, I might note, it seems that idiocy seems to be very much a part of that. And basically, <clears throat> the point I tried to make in Wealth, Women, and War, and I even did a cartoon that's somewhere in this collection on it, is that since we no longer live in an agrarian society, a social contract created around a concept of being an independent operator who can till the land and sustain himself or herself and his or her family uh, is no longer functional. We left the farms a long time ago. I want you to mull that one over. Basically, my point is simple. We need a new social contract without the idiocies of Family Guy, The Simpsons, American Dad, Survivor, Big House, Big Brother, etc., etc., etc. I'll uh, talk to you again later. That's all for now. Bye-bye. 29th of August, 2011. This is Cliff Potts. Welcome. And I started yesterday talking a little bit about social contract. And this course brings up the power play of corporations. Corporations are artificial entities. They're not people, despite what the Supreme Court ruled recently in the uh, Citizens United decision. People have rights. Corporations are artificial. They're created by law. They're created by us people for the specific reason of minimizing the exposure to litigation and lawsuit by the corporate owners. The idea is that if something goes wrong, as it often does, that the corporation is held accountable for what has happened, not the individuals who own it. Obviously, this was put together by rich folk to protect themselves and to funnel money into the corporations to do the work that they feel had to be done. Uh, there's a video on YouTube that points out that uh, this is before I did my or after I did my writing, so I wish I could have incorporated the idea. Something I didn't know at the time. I didn't pick up in my business uh, studies that uh, corporations used to be formed for a specific project and once that project was over the corporation was disbanded well anymore that one specific prob project is an ongoing never-ending kind of nebulous thing called maximizing profits and they will do anything they can to uh, make themselves profitable um, I also pointed out in Wealth, Women, and War that uh, corporations being patriotic entities is a relatively new idea. I'm not too sure I'm correct in that, I'll be honest with you. This is one of those things that, you know, if I was writing it now, I might have gone a different direction. And now, mind you, I'm not saying they are patriotic entities. They are, they are uh, amoral at best. Now, Thomas Jefferson also pointed out that merchants know no country. Let's go over him. 
you know, the, their loyalty to the country is not as strong as where they're going to get their gains. He also said that people who wish to be ignorant and free can be neither. It's applicable because we don't know what our corporations or our corporations. Ah, see, it even slides into my my lexicon. Uh, what the corporations are doing. Now, mind you, because uh, again, I told you, I wrote all this in uh, 2007 before the blowout. There's an article. I'm going to put in the notes down there. And I want you to see. It has to do with uh, basically we're at a zero growth point again. I didn't read it. You know, like most of you, I just got off of work. I'm just you know, doing my thing to try and make a living. And uh, I didn't read it, but I did read at it real quick, and it looks interesting, so I'll pass it on to you. That's it for me for today. As always, may your God go with you. I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Good morning, September 30th, 2011. This is Cliff Potts. Welcome. I just was reading uh, the remarks from uh, the little senator out of Little Havana telling us that Social Security has made us weak and lazy. I'm not going to get into uh, a discussion on how much the U.S. government supported the anti-Castro Cubans in the United States when they first came over here. I mean, you know, that would be, what, racist maybe? I don't know. But I can say this. The time to re-examine uh, Social Security was well past. You've got a generation, one of the largest generations in the United States, that is now reaching retirement age, and you're about to pull the rug out from under us after we paid for not only the GI generation's retirement and uh, eventual uh, passing, but uh, for the most part the silent generation as well. And now you're telling us that there's not going to be anything left for us after paying in all of our working lives. You know, tell the representative from Little Havana to stick it, please. Thank you. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Okay, correction. It's August 30th, 2011. Ah, uh, what can I say? It is way too early in the morning for me, and I haven't had enough coffee. On top of which, as I just pointed out to a friend, I am definitely an autumn freak. And I have been waiting for the fall in Chicago since coming here in May. So, <laughs> I guess I'm pushing the clock. <laughs> Once again, talk to you later. Folks. I've got an announcement for you, and this is today's message. How's this one? Politicians suck. Life sucks. It's all horrible out there. It's all bullshit. And guess what? Life is still fun, okay? It's still something you enjoy. It's still something to get out there and embrace and be part of it. Even if all the bullshit is still bullshit, it's too bad. That's just life. But it's still fun. So deal with it. Thank you. This is Cliff Potts. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye. Good morning. It's Wednesday, August 31st, 2011. It's Cliff Potts. If you're wondering what that last bit was all about, that's me making fun of the doom and gloom that we have rolling across our uh, Facebook pages. We have this propensity of uh, basically preaching to the choir. And what that phrase actually means, by the way, is that the preacher is preaching in a church where only the choir is showing up. Only those who have a vested interest in being there are the ones paying attention. And that's pretty much what's going on on Facebook, uh, especially among the liberals. We don't argue politics with uh, our opponents much anymore. Uh, I admit I don't do it either. And uh, that was just my way of uh, taking care of a piece of dust here while I'm talking to you. That was just my way of uh, kind of poking fun at the whole, uh, the whole situation. But the bottom line is life uh, is fun. You never know what's the next page, what's on the next page. And as uh, I go off into the morning here pretty soon, that's about the way I look at it. Um, I don't embrace death. I do not embrace my mortality. I, 
I have to admit that I'd like to live forever, even if it's the same day in and day out, which of course it won't be, because <laughs> inevitably, uh, as you go through life, there's always uh, some crazy thing that's going to happen that throws you for a loop. Lord knows, I've seen enough loops in my day. <laughs> I was, uh, I'm continuing on this uh, review of Wealth, Women, and War for you. We're at the point where uh, it talks about competition. And the biggest thing that I uh, pointed out in that is that there is very little competition among the multinationals. Um, the only illustration I can give you goes back to the uh, 1977, I believe it was 77, uh, movie Rollerball, where the world was divided up into a corporate interest, the uh, political governments didn't exist anymore and that rollerball the game was created to fulfill the need to wage wars and it was also as stated in the movie and I hope this is not a spoiler for you uh, <laughs> it was I mean, it's been around out for a few years now like I said 77 76 77 uh, <clears throat> can I say it uh, also point was the game was created to point out the futility of individual effort, and of course, in that game that was supposed to uh, kill all of its great star players, uh, Jonathan E emerged as the last victorious player in a game that had no rules at all. Interesting movie, interesting concept. Uh, a little slow and a little boring. Even uh, back in the 70s, it was slow, but it was an interesting view of the world that was to come. And unfortunately, uh, the author uh, who, of the story, it's uh, in, a, in, in an anthology, but the story itself is called Rollerball Murder. The author of that story uh, was pretty accurate in his view of the future. Of course, again, so was uh, uh, Huxley in Brave New World, and less so uh, for uh, Orwell with 1984, and I've uh, said enough about Orwell in that regard. So the uh, crux of uh, the chapter in Wealth, Women, and War on competition is that as far as the multinationals are concerned, there really isn't a whole lot of competition. Now, here's the problem with some of those firms. Um, many of them got to be the size that they are because they simply gobbled up the small firms that were <clears throat> excellent at what they did. And uh, that's to be said to be true. But some of these firms who have gotten so big have gotten so big because they are very good at what they do. I mean, the actual product they put out in the field is uh, actually very good. <clears throat> Excuse me, and the service that they render is also very good. So, but the bottom line for us is that they've gotten so big, there is uh, no way to control them. Also, as we saw in 2008 after the book was written, they've gotten so big that we can't afford to let them shut down, or so we think. The truth of the matter is, yes, we can. Going on a little long with this one. I will talk to you later. Have yourself a good day. Bye bye for now. Well, we're going to cut this one loose and put it up for posterity's sake. As always, may your God go with you. I will talk to you later. Bye bye for now. <laughs>